Facts and Algebra 1, Lesson 102. The topic is absolute value inequalities. Oh, uh, that just sounds really hard, but it's not, so don't worry. All right, let me break it down for you, and um, I'm going to give you a little theoretical information, and then I'm going to skip right into the practical stuff, and that's where we're going to focus. I think it works much better instead of giving students theory right at the beginning. Do the problems for a while, get the hang of how they work, then later we can go back and talk about the theory. Because when you get the theory in the beginning, it just confuses things. So I will tell you this, at the end of Algebra 2, or right around the same lesson number, we're going to come back to these absolute values, absolute value inequalities, and I will talk a little bit more about um, the theory of them. So for now, we're just going to do it. Remember that the thing about absolute value signs is that they always give you the positive version of the number. And the reason for that is that what an absolute value ab actually measures is the distance from that number to zero. So the number of units between zero and positive four are four. The number of units between negative 4 and 0 are also positive 4, because we're measuring the distance and we don't care which direction it is. That's what absolute value means, is the distance from 0 to that number. So that's why it's always positive. What absolute value means. Now, what if we're graphing them? Okay, let's look at that. Thankfully, we're just using these little baby graphs, just number lines, right? It says graph absolute value of x is greater than 2. Okay, here's my number line. Um, so we know that if the number is 2.00001 or 3 or 4 or 5, all of the absolute than 2, right? We could put 77 in here, and that would be fine. So anything greater than 2 is going to work. But when we put negative numbers in here, the absolute value of those negative numbers is also going to be positive once we take the, the absolute value, right? So we can take any number that is smaller, because we want to go this way, the negative 2 and put that in here. So, so for example, down here is negative 5. If we put neg the absolute value of negative 5 is greater than 2, let's see if that's true. That would be then 5 is greater than 2. Yep, that's true. So, whenever we do absolute value inequalities, we're going to have to consider the positive and the negative versions of x because there will be kind of two sets of numbers. So, let me show you an easier way to do this. When we graph something like this, what we do is we break it down into the two pieces, just like we did here. But one way we do it is we just take the absolute value signs off and then write it exactly as it is, right? So there's one piece of what we have to graph. That's this over here, right? X is greater than 2. Then what we do, and this is the practical side of this, we say X, then we flip the equality, the inequality sign, and we put that number on a negative. That's where we get this second set of numbers, right? X is less than negative 2 or X is greater than 2, okay? So this strategy is what we're going to use from here on out to graph these. We're not going to think about it, <laughs> which, I mean, I'm not sure how hmm, reasonable it is for your teacher to tell you, just don't think about it. But, just don't think about it. It's easy. <laughs> Ready? Oh, I skipped two. That's not fair. Got so excited by Gracie Barkey. Absolute value of x is less than or equal to three. Okay. This was a greater than. Notice that the greater than went that way. You can imagine with the less than, it's going to go inside. But let's just look at how it works. Okay, we're going to break this down right away. We're going to say x is less than or equal to 3, right? It's exactly the same with just the absolute values ripped off. On the other side, we're going to say x 
then change the direction of that. Leave the equal sign. If there is an equal sign, let's see where am I? If there is an equal sign, it goes along. If there isn't, it doesn't, right? So you don't have to change that. Just take what you have and flip it. And then we take the negative of that. So now these are the two parts we're going to actually graph. Here's three, and here's negative three. Now, we want to get only the numbers between these two. So it's got to be less than or equal to positive three and greater than or equal to negative three. So we're kind of graphing both at once, right? We can't have the numbers that keep going up here because, for example, six, that wouldn't work. Six is not less than or equal to. So we get the space between these two expressions, right? Here we had them going out. That was a greater than. When we have a less than, they're facing in. All right, that's a little pattern that will help you um, get this straight. Okay, example 102.3. There are, are six examples to this one, but they're all pretty straightforward. Um, graph. Absolute value of x is less than minus 4. Okay? Break it apart. x is less than minus 4, and x is greater than positive 4. Okay? So, We stop and we think about that and we go, wait a minute. How can a number be both greater than 4 and less than negative 4 at the same time? It can't be. So there's no solution to this. Right? We could graph, you know, like negative 4 and positive 4, but that would just be the individual answers. It doesn't work because. No, it's not because they're individual answers. It's because the absolute value of a negative number is never going to happen. It's always going to be a positive number. So there's no solution, or the other way you can write this is null set, empty set. So the problem here with this minus sign, whenever we have an absolute value being less than a negative number, world implodes, and we're always going to have a no solution scenario. That was three. Now we're doing four. Example 102.4. This one is also tricky. The absolute value of x is greater than minus 4. Okay, we see this minus sign in here. This is all simplified. Later we're going to get some tricks with algebra, but right now we have a simplified inequality. We've got a minus sign. Aha! That means that we have a trick scenario going on. What are the values of x? What are the absolute values of x that will be greater than minus 4? x can be any number, and its absolute value will always be positive, right? Absolute values are always positive. So, if it's greater than that, then that means any number could go in there. So it's all numbers, right? Because I could choose negative 10. That we'll test and see if that's greater than negative 4. Yeah, because that's positive 10. Right? But it also works, let's say we choose regular 10. See if that's greater than minus 4. Yeah, because that's 10. So no matter what you put in here, what about 0? Absolute value of 0, that's 0. Is that greater than negative 4? Yes. All of these work. Every number you can imagine will work. So when you have a greater than, any a greater than a negative number, it will be infinite number of solutions. So that's 2 the absolute value of a an inequality with a 
negative number. Will always be a trick. Trick I use euphemistically. Right? It's not really a trick, it's just kind of a, an unusual scenario. If it's less than, it'll be no solutions. I mean, you can't see that. If it's a less than, it's no solution. And if it's greater than, it's infinite solutions. Okay, so that was three and four, examples three and four. This was example 102.3, and this was example 102.4. Okay, so look out for that. Now, let me, there's two more examples that are useful. Graph, sometimes he just keeps going and I'm like, stop already. Why do you keep giving us more problems? But this time, there's a good reason for these. Now, number five, we look at it and we go, aha, it's an inequality with a negative number. Which is true, but the problem, the reason we can't jump to that conclusion is that we haven't cleaned up the algebra first. So, R applies after you clean up the algebra. First we have to clean up the algebra, then we'll see if we have this scenario. So in this case, don't get excited because we have some algebra to fix. We have to multiply or divide both sides by negative one. I'm going to divide both sides by negative one because for me, it's easier to show that neatly. This is going to flip, isn't it? If we multiply or divide an inequality by a negative number, it flips. This now becomes positive absolute value of x. That goes that way. Remember, the minus sign just comes along for the ride. If it's there, great. If it's not, then it's not. Now we have a situation that is not one of these trick situations. So, first you clean up the algebra, and then if you have a negative, you can deal with it. All right, so this is going to be either x is less than or equal to 3, or x is greater than or equal to minus 3. So, 3, oh no, that's minus 3, that's positive 3. So it's less than 3, but greater than minus 3. It includes those points. So that is our solution for this one. Makes sense. This splitting apart, you guys, John doesn't really show that in the same way that I do. That's the secret to making these problems easy. And now the last one. Example 102.6, the graph. Here's another example of that rule I just showed you. Yes, it's an inequality with a negative sign. You start to get excited and go, oh, it's one of those trick situations. But then you remember the little part I wrote on the side. First, clean up the algebra. Then see if it's a negative sign. So I'm going to add 2 to both sides. Negative absolute value of x is greater than minus 3. And now I'm going to divide because that's easier for me. You can multiply. And I'm going to get absolute value of x is less than positive 3. Now the algebra is clean. Okay, it's not one of the weirdos. x is less than 3 or on this side, x, change that, change the sign. All right, so x is less than 3 greater than negative 3. It's almost the exact same problem as last time, except there's no equal. So, it's like this. Circle, circle, and then the space in between. Because both of these have to be true in order for the solution to work. All right. That is our tutorial with graphing inequalities. It's kind of nuanced, right? You have to pay attention to those rules and watch for the minus signs and flip things around and split apart your inequality into these two separate graphable bits, but it's not the worst lesson we ever did, right? Right. Okay, that's lesson 102. Goodbye.